So, CD Projekt Red is pretty much sitting at the edge of reshaping history. And what do I mean by that? You, you, you have to really think through these things and look deep into, you know, trends and patterns and, you know, acclaim and what's been going on pretty much over the past few years. Um, this is what it is. CD Projekt Red released a very immersive game in 2015 called The Witcher 3. I mean, you cannot restate this story and overstate it. It's a critical fact that the game still today is selling, you know, a bunch of copies because it's just it was just a very good game. The game has pretty much not just made uh, City Project Red, you know, tons of money like a fortune. I'm thinking in my mind that the game has pretty much set, trip, uh, you know, City Project Red as one of the, if not the best AAA company in the world right now. I mean, if you want to look at it from a very wide range of criterion. Now, yes, they don't have a lot of games, but their consumer practices will pretty much hand them that vote easily. Now, I would not make this claim you know, a few weeks ago. I would not have made a claim like this. And, you know, my claim might be a little bit outlandish. I may be, you know, giving them much more props than, you know, they probably are, you know, uh, you know, probably than they deserve. But, you know, honestly, I don't think so. I think in the climate that we're in today, they're just exactly where it is that they were. So I'm making this video because I just wanted to put something out there that I know is going to be very critical for the gaming scene. And CD Projekt Red is actually just right there at the helm of it. Now, CD Projekt Red's video um, for Cyberpunk, the, the gameplay reveal video for Cyberpunk 20, I couldn't say Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk 2077 came out at having 8.5 million views, you know, I mean, that is, that's no small feat, you know, and in and the news article here on VGR says that that video, Cyberpunk 2077 gameplay reveal was the most watched new game stream of 2018. I think the reason this game, you know, actually had a lot of people's attention is because of a whole lot of things, you know, it's not like another company has not done a cyberpunk, you know, futuristic age tech kind of game before. Deus Ex Mankind Divided and all the Deus, Deus Ex series are supposed to be in this genre, but the fact that it's from CD Projekt Red, a company that has shown some true grit when it comes to making video games. I think that's one of the reasons that people are actually interested in this game. You see, CD Projekt Red is a statistical anomaly for game development companies and, you know, a publisher as well. They're, they're not your normal company. I, I, call them, I call them statistical anomaly because what they do and how they do things where one of their DLCs that was released, um, you know, with The Witcher was actually the, the DLC combined. There were two DLCs that were released. With the witcher the reports are those dlcs were actually much longer than entire video games by themselves that's not usually typical now why would cd project red have done this back in the day they just had a lot of time on their hands or you know they just made a lot of money from you know the witcher 3 i don't think that those are necessarily the cases uh yes you know those could have played in but i think cd project red intentionally got to where it is over the course of time i think over time they were making conscious decisions to favor their gamers and their community to be able to get to this point where they can then eventually dominate the world. CD Projekt Red is, is right now sitting at world domination when it comes to game development companies. You will be, it will be very hard for you to find a major games developer that makes the genre of games and the quality of games that CD Projekt Red makes that actually has the same reputation. Yes, there are, there are others that are actually good. They actually emulate great practices. But at this point, with this kind of success and cognizance around, I think they're the only ones. EA right now is just pushing an uphill battle to even be able to sell copies of their new game. And I'm sad about that. I'll make a video about that here in a bit. Also, you're talking about other companies like Ubisoft, where, you know, a lot of controversy surrounds some of their games. They were the Division 2 right now with all the pre-order stuff and selling seven day access. This is the reason I'm making this video. I really want to address CD Projekt Red. If you can share this video, share it. I'm probably going to post this video on their timeline. But if you're a big, you know, shot caller over there at CD Projekt Red, you're a decision maker. You need to take one more step and you will break pretty much the paradigm of history in the gaming world. You know what that step is? Get the games into the hands of the gamers. Now, there's a new practice. I don't know if it's new. Maybe it's old. It's not it's not new. But there's a common practice for, you know, games press to get a hold of games and play them and create buzz around those games. Now, that practice, I don't think should stop. But I think that practice needs to be complemented by demos. We need to bring back demos. CD Projekt Red, you are 
pretty much the company that can convince these other gaming companies to bring demos back so that everybody can get to play the game because word of mouth is probably the most powerful way to send across a message and actually finalize your marketing on a product. And if CD Projekt Red can actually bring out a demo for Cyberpunk 2077 for everybody to access, they will definitely disrupt this whole market. They will, they, I mean, it's right there. I mean, they're, they're holding it right there in front of them. And I know there's pressure to do well. I never, you know, the expectations for Cyberpunk 2077 are high, whatever. The game, honestly, may not blow a lot of people out of the water, but the company's practices and how it relates to its community, how it wants to bring out good stuff, I think that's exactly where they are. So CD Projekt Red, put the games in the hands of the gamer. You know, Battlefield 5, the Division 2, Anthem. I don't know if Anthem is doing it, but I know those two games. Do you know they're actually they're actually, you know, promoting a paid early access to their betas. Like you get to pay to be able to get a demo of this game earlier than anybody else. That's not an industry practice that I remember. In fact, the very first time I played a PlayStation in my life, it was a it was a it was a PlayStation console. My neighbor had it. And, you know, he, he invited me over and we were playing this, you know, we're playing a CD that had a bunch of demos on it. It had Max Payne, it had Crash Bandicoot, it had this, there was a soccer game that it had. I don't think it was winning 11 or PES. And we sat there the whole day and we played and enjoyed demos. Two little kids just enjoying, you know, different genres of games and being wild. I walked home that day with the days in front of me like I just I, I don't remember even waking up <laughs> from that you know from the the aura of just enjoying you know those demos and longing to play the continued versions of some of these games that's what demos were created for demos were created to give people a taste of what's going on right now spider-man developers are having to just speak about you know oh we removed the puddle or you know just because of one thing we didn't downgrade how would how would how would the player base know how would we know? The game comes out in like four days. How are we supposed to know if there's a downgrade or not? How are we supposed to make up our minds? We have to trust another person's opinion. We don't know how the game feels. Even though somebody else plays the game in front of you, that can always sway your opinion, no doubt. It can sway your opinion left or right. I remember the first time I saw, you know, the Rad Brad play Far Cry 4. Immediately, I went to my wife. I said, babe, there's something that I would like for you to approve on the budget, please. And that was it. That was how I got into Far Cry 4. But I think, you know, CD Projekt Red is holding the keys right now to their own world domination in the gaming scene, and they need to do it. They just need to do it. It may not be part of your plan, CD Projekt Red, but man, if you guys can actually make it happen where there's a playable demo for people, and you can always put a disclaimer and say, hey, this is subject to change. You may not be playing the same game when this is released, just like you did when you actually did your, your gameplay reveal. In their gameplay reveal, they actually made a very great conscious decision and said, and put the disclaimer right there, that this, this, this may change by the time you know the game is released. And you know, honestly, I don't think people really care. I think at this point, people just want to feel like they're part of the process of actually making, you know, the video games because actually the, the, the community members are, you know, EA is, is actually suffering from its own stance against its own community to, you know, to create a, an accurate depiction of World War II. They could have said, you know what, community, you're right. Our World War II game is not actually a factual depiction. So we're going to change our marketing and say, enjoy this World War II experience that we're packaging for you. And they would have been fine. But apparently EA doesn't know anything about PR. So, you know, EA can just pick a bunch of guys on YouTube and create a great PR firm that's going to do all this work. So I don't know. I'm not trying to insult anybody, but clearly their PR team, uh, I don't know. Maybe it's a matter of leadership. You know, let me not, you know, bash on anybody because it's too easy to do that, actually. It's easy to bash on people. But, you know, leadership needs to watch what's going on there. And CD Projekt Red, your leadership right now, where you are, you are standing at the helm of history in this whole in this whole thing. You are you are the, you are the crossroad. You just need to take the right turn, and that right turn is bringing this game to the hands of gamers. Yes, get it out to Games Press, get it out to the big shots that are going to promote the game for you on YouTube and all these places. But then create anticipation and say, on this day or come this season or this you know quarter. There's going to be a playable demo that everybody can actually, you know, get their hands on and just see the internet break. <laughs>
So that's just some futuristic type thinking, just me looking and, you know, thinking like, man, I wonder what would happen. And I know the community feels the same way. Leave in the comments how you feel. Let's know. And share this video, man. Like, you know, I'm going to go and, you know, post it. I don't know if they're going to watch. I don't know if, you know, if it's part of their business plan and their alignment for the year, for the quarter. But man, I really, really see this as making a big difference in the gaming scene and just turning it on its head over and over, you know, just uh, just turn it upside down. And that's what we need right now. We need this gaming industry to be turned upside down because these practices all all of what's going on right now just does not show you know the world that we want to be in and you know it just it doesn't it doesn't depict a good world so i'm gonna stop ranting now and i'm gonna get out of your hair leave comments and let me know what you think subscribe if you want more content where we discuss in-depth analysis about the gaming scene i appreciate your, t your time and audience i appreciate your comments as well thank you very much and i guess i'll see you in my next video peace